Steve Ballmer. <laughs> Is it good enough? Woo! It's yes? good to be here okay. in Rotterdam. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> What kind of students were you? Not bad. I worked hard until some of the years in university. What? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> What happened? I decided that, like, doing this business stuff was more interesting, and I stopped going to all my classes. Mm -hmm. Is this at Harvard University, the best one in the world, as we heard today? Well, I don't know if it was the best, but I didn't go to any classes <laughs> for a long time, for a while. Okay, um, we know you from making an appearance uh, in your own Microsoft world, which is wild and crazy. How do you energize a crowd like this, 600 people? What do you do? Well, you know... I think one of the fun things is I get to work with some of the most fun products and people are always interested in hearing what's new, whether we're ahead or behind, what's coming with Xbox, hey, I like the new Windows, hey, I don't like the new Windows, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, people are interested and I'm interested in sharing my enthusiasm. And it works. Well, sometimes. <laughs> we'll see today. <laughs> with students, it always works because students actually have a lot of a lot of passion for a lot of things. So it's always most fun talking to university groups. Right. The way you come up in an audience, normally when you speak for Microsoft personnel, let's have a look at what happens then. Introducing new Microsoft Windows XP. Now, how much do you think Microsoft Windows is worth? Oh, all my pictures, all my music, all my videos, all in one place. Developers, 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 developers. I love this company, yes! <laughs> You're in a country where the saying is, act normal, that's crazy enough. <laughs> that's not your motto, is that's it? That's normal. Oh, this is normal. Right. <laughs> Although I got to admit, I know those videos exist. I've never watched them. I hate watching myself, so you I, just tortured me. Are you ashamed or what? I'm not ashamed, but I'm always working on losing weight, so I really hate looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Well, hello, Mr. Balmer. Uh, well, as we've just seen, we all know that you are not a boring aristocratic uh, CEO, but you are actually quite funny and crazy in a way. But I like that. Uh, my question is that how do you ensure that your way of leading adds something positive to the company and the corporate culture and not that your employees start seeing you as some sort of a charlatan or something? Yeah, I, it's actually a really good question. One of the things I think everybody who, everybody, not just everybody who's a leader, everybody has to do is figure out a way to be themselves and at the same time be genuinely themselves. People, particularly in leadership spots, but people overdo everything. I, I overdo. I mean, I am an energetic and enthusiastic person, but let's face it, you know, you get a little bit too much adrenaline going, a little bit too much of a rush, but as long as you have periods where you can then calm down, slow down, and really talk to people, Have you always been like this? No. No, I, I actually was very shy as a kid. And even when I went to uh, graduate school in business, the people who met me when I first arrived will still come, which was, I was 23, 24 years old. Huh. People will tell you I was quite nervous. Hi, Steve Ballmer. What's Sorry I'm so nervous <laughs> to meet you. When did it change? 
Uh, it sort of started a little bit in college, a little bit before that. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> and then I'd say, re really, at Microsoft, uh, you know, I'd done some public speaking, and it, it, it's a question of getting more confident. You get more confident, and it becomes more comfortable. Right. Uh, we digged a little bit in your past. I see. Yes, and we found stuff. Are you getting nervous? Well, those pictures made me nervous. <laughs> I hope there's nothing worse. The funny thing is that your father was an employee for Ford Motor Company, and he worked for a brief time in Belgium. And you were studying in Belgium, right? Right, three years. Three years. How old were you? Uh, eight years old to 11 years old. We lived uh, just outside Brussels in a Flemish neighborhood. And you went to school there? I did. Yes. We found one of your old teachers. Let's have a look. Oh, no. Ik herinner me nog omdat het zo'n struis Amerikaantje was met een crew cut, zo'n militaire haarstijl. Hij was uh, ook wel een leider, zowel uh, in, in het klaslokaal als op, de speel, als op het speelplein. Hij, uh, in het klaslokaal bijvoorbeeld, als ik iets vroeg, uh, wie brengt... Oep, Steve was recht en die had het al gehaald. Wie deelt dit uit? Oep, Steve ging alles uitdelen. Uh, op, de speelplein, op het speelplein organiseerde hij hoe het ging, en, uh, maar altijd op een heel aangename, plezierige manier. This is one of your former uh, teachers. Miss Van Stickel. You know her. You oh, absolutely. Her. <laughs> absolutely, I know her. <laughs> Second grade. I was, was she, eight years old. Yeah, was she tough on you? Or? Yeah, very. <laughs> very, actually. You still have nightmares? or? Well, my, my father got transferred to, to Brussels at the end of my second grade year. And I got to her class, spent one month, and she wrote a note to my parents. Steve's having trouble in school. He might not do very well in third grade. And it scared me a lot. Mm -hmm. So I studied the whole summer between second and third grade just because of Miss Van Stickle. <laughs> <laughs> she was good for you and your career. Woo! Very yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump a bit. 30 years ago, you joined this company, uh, Microsoft. Why did you choose for a startup company that nobody had ever heard before? Well, I, I really didn't. I was trying to decide which of the big companies. I, Talked to Ford, where my dad worked, and a number of other big companies. And then Bill called. And he said, hey, Steve, geez, I really could use you, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, Bill, I haven't graduated yet. He says, oh, I don't really care. But I said, well, I really should finish up, blah, blah, blah. And so I said, okay, I'll come talk to you. And when I, when I went, I went for one reason. Bill was the smartest guy I'd ever met. And I felt like no matter what else happened, I'd never be in a position where I didn't respect the intelligence of my boss. And I never had that problem, certainly with Bill. You know, <laughs> always, he and I fought a lot. That's also the nature. You know, we argue, blah, blah, blah. But, whoo, he's do. got one good brain. Are you still fighting? We always are arguing. We're friends. We argue. It's, I like to say it's a lot like brothers. Right. They love each other. But you can't tell every minute of every day. Yeah. So when you came in the company, how was it doing at the time? Was there any profit? Did they do well or not? The company was two and a half million dollars in sales. Uh, and we made, a, we made some profit. Bill had run the company very well. But it was two and a half million dollars in sales. And I don't know. I think I was the 30th employee. Somebody told me I was the 24th employee. Mm. It was a small little company. I got to work the first day. There was no desk. Bill had a couch in his office, and he said, you can have the left side of the couch <laughs> if you push the papers out of the way. <laughs> my, my parents didn't understand why I had, uh, didn't understand at all why I dropped out of business school to go join that company. They protested it. They were against this idea, right? Oh, uh, yeah. My, my, it was funny. My, I go home, and I tell my mom and dad, I'm going to go to work with my friend Bill Gates. And they said, well, we like Bill. He's a nice boy, blah, blah, blah. And they said, but what does he do? I said, he, he makes software for personal computers. And my father, you know, very smart man, said, what is software? <laughs> and my mother said, 
why would a person ever need a computer? So yeah, they had some doubts about what I was up to. <laughs> but they were proud in the end. I must Absolutely. Probably, okay. Would you advise these guys who are at the beginning of a career to go to a startup, young and dynamic, or go to an established, well-established uh, company? I love people coming to our big company, but let's face it, there's no better time to try the risk of a startup than when you're young. But the most important thing is get fired up, get passionate, love something about what you're doing. That's the number one thing I would encourage. Here you go. Hi, Steve. Um, let's say Microsoft was purchased by IBM and you would have finished uh, graduate school at Harvard. Where would you have seen yourself today? Well, I probably would have taken one of the other jobs I was interviewing for. Most likely, I would have gone and been a management consultant, but I hope I wouldn't have. The other job that really interested me was to go be the assistant to the president of a car insurance company. It was a tiny little car insurance company, and actually it's a brilliant company. It's now the third largest car insurance company in the United States because they just had brilliant people and they've gone from nothing to something. I suspect I'd be sitting there asking you if you need car insurance today. <laughs> I think you would have been out of a job today. I might have been. <laughs> um, over there. In times of crisis, you see uh, the real leaders. Um, I went over your corporate values at your website, uh, self-criticism and self-improvement. What has been your latest self-criticism and how did it help to improve, uh, contribute uh, your self-improvement as a leader, especially in these times? I'm always working on the same thing. The good news is I'm energetic and outgoing. The bad news is sometimes that sort of scares people from giving me their best idea and best thinking. So I'm learning to modulate a little bit in order to encourage others to bring me kind of their best ideas. Bill Gates, he's a phenomenon. He's the, the richest man in the world. I think he lost like 15 billion last year, but still he's on top of the, the Forbes and the Fortune list. You already explained that you act like brothers almost and you have a long relationship with him. Let have, let's have a look at a little clip. excited to be announcing uh, that Steve Ballmer's taking on the role as CEO. Who? Him? Who? Him? Who? Him? Him? him, him who? who? Me? What? I'm excited about the incredible opportunities in front of the company. I've been the CEO of Microsoft for 25 years, and they've been very exciting years. got a great team. Having Bill be a full-time member of that team as chief architect is outstanding, and uh, I couldn't be more pumped up. How weird is it to take over from a guy like that in 2000 like you did? How difficult was it to be the next CEO of this company? A lot harder than I thought it would be. No, I didn't think it would be that hard. I'd worked with Bill nonstop, every day, all day, 20 years. So I thought, well, okay, this shouldn't be too hard. I know what the job is. And I said to Bill, if, don't make me CEO unless you really want me to be CEO. Because for 20 years, we had agreed, Bill's the senior partner, I'm the junior partner. And I said, if you want really to switch, we got to switch. And then we spent a year arguing about what that meant.